Hi, I'm Chad with Move For a Guitar. This lesson is from our series, How to Read Music for a Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to explain the notes on the staff. First off, if you like all the diagrams for this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide, How to Read Music for a Guitar. But I am working on it right now as I'm filming this lesson, so it might not be available as you're watching this lesson. If it is available, a link will pop up on the screen that will allow you to download it. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to download it when it is available. This is part three in our series, How to Read Music for Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So in the last lesson, I explained that the guitar is written in the treble clef, which this is the sign for the treble clef right here. And clefs tell you the actual names of the notes that land on the staff, because without the clef, you wouldn't actually know the names of these notes landing here. You would just know their relative distance from each other. So on the treble clef, your notes look like this. Your lowest note that is attached to the actual staff is a D. So you can see it's hanging right here on the first line. So that's D, and this is the lower note up here where it says G is your higher note. And the musical alphabet is just like the regular alphabet, except it start, stops at G. So if you're looking at right here where it says A, it just goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it would start back over at A. Those are all the notes in the musical alphabet meaning you're not going to have an H, I, J. It just stops at G and starts over back at A. And I have a whole series on music theory for guitar where I really dive into that. I specifically broke apart the two series so that you're not learning how to read music and learning a bunch of theory at once. A lot of times it's taught that way and I think that can be really confusing because you're learning way too many things at once. So I separated these two series apart and you can learn all the music theory you want to learn with the other series and then learn how to read music in this series. So if you run into stuff about, for example, the musical alphabet or different concepts that you might not understand, go check out Music Theory for Guitar. It's going to fill in all those gaps for you. And I'm sure you can see that these notes are repeating. For example, there's a D, there's a D, here's an E, here's an E. And those are different octaves, which go watch our Music Theory for Guitar series to learn all about octaves. But I will be touching more on this in upcoming lessons. So it, even if you don't understand that, I will be touching on it. But you can see that these letters just repeat after G. So if you start on D, go in the musical alphabet. Once you hit G, it's going to start over at A like the regular alphabet and then just keep going. But every time you hit G, it starts back over at A. So you're going to end up with the same note names in here. And another thing I want to point out, you can see again how I mentioned that the treble clef is also known as the G. And that's where this treble clef is circling this line right here which is the line that holds the G note. So that's why this is also known as a G clef. But you'll hear treble clef more often. So like I said, the lowest note that is attached to the first line is a D, and then it just goes through the musical alphabet. So D is attached to the first line, E is on the first line, F is in the first space, G is on the second line, A is in the second space, B is on the third line, C is on the third space, D is on the fourth line, E is on the fourth space, F is on the fifth line, and G is above the fifth line. Attached to the fifth line but above it, so resting on top of it. And obviously when you're talking about music notation, it's not going to be written D, E, F, G, etc. It's not going to be written with letter names. It's going to be written with different types of dots that represent different note values, etc. But we'll get into that in upcoming lessons. Like I said, I don't want to overload you with too much at once. I think it's better just to focus on as little as possible and just build on top of that. So if you want to know where the actual notes are, you can always just go up in the musical alphabet starting with D being attached to your first line, below your first line but attached to it. But that can be really slow. There's a couple tricks that you can use for finding things quicker. And the first one is that E, G, B, D, F are all on the lines. So those notes fall on the lines and there's a little trick you can use and that's every good boy deserves fudge. That's a really common thing where every good boy deserves fudge is just taking the first letter of each of the notes that lands on the lines and putting a word behind it to create a phrase that's easy to remember. And so that you know the first line would represent every, the second line would represent good, third, boy, fourth, deserves, and fifth, fudge. So then you would know that it would be E, G, B, D, F. Those are the notes on the lines. And then the notes that fall in the spaces are F, A, C, E. 
and that obviously just spells face. So that's another trick that people use that the notes that fall in the spaces spell face. So the notes landing on the lines are E, G, B, D, F, and you can use a little trick of every good boy deserves fudge. And the notes in the spaces are F, A, C, E, and you can use a little trick of just knowing that that spells face. So those are the notes that land on the staff. Go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm going to explain how you can write notes above and below this staff using something called ledger lines. And be sure to download the e-guide. All the diagrams are in there. And be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.